So there's my wife, there's my dog, there's my yard, there's my pond, and there's Brian, <laughs> and Chris. White, white dog, then Brian and Chris. <laughs> pond, and then Brian. Yeah, yeah. Pond, yeah. And we know where you stay in the rankings. There's my pond. <laughs> then I got and, married, then I got a dog, mm -hmm. then I hired people that changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've heard this before, but if you build one at your house, soon enough your neighbor is going to want one too. Absolutely. And not only do they want one, they want one that Chris and I built in the sandbox. actually a really cool project. You know what would be fun, Chris? We built that with Matthew and my nephew. Yep. We should get Frankie out here too and maybe get Frankie, Matthew, and my nephew out here to help us on this one because it is going to be slightly bigger. That's awesome. Well, because that was a pondless you built and they want, of course, a pond living next to not the pondless guy, but the pond guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what are you thinking here, buddy? What we built in the back sandbox area, we had a pretty big berm and it's hard to put a berm of that size in this backyard. So if we want to get a berm of this size in a flat backyard and actually a yard that pitches away yeah the very first thing that has to happen is put in a retaining wall yes so chris and i have what we call like kind of a three foot rule whatever height the waterfall starts at the soil for the berm should come out flat three feet at the same height as the waterfall so it doesn't look like a mound like a yeah. teepee or a my biggest pet peeve is those volcanic looking yep. or looking waterfalls. Yep. So if we come up with a waterfall about this high, we want that to fan out at least three feet. Yep. Here we're going to give it, you know, four to five feet to give them a lot of room for plants as a backdrop to this. Now it's kind of nice that they have some height in here. Yep. But I'd like them to get even more height up in this berm area here. And we have to keep it far enough off the fence that Dawson and Rex and Willow, my dog, can run around the whole yard. Because that was the order. Yes, it was. Then dog. Yes. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> So what we're doing now is just kind of marking out where Cruz from Crux Lawn is going to come out and build us a retaining wall. If we can have this retaining wall done before we get here, it'll make our job so much easier. So that we can really focus on what we do best and build the waterfall. Yeah. The pond. And normally we would put in a boulder retaining wall, but we want the max, it's a smaller yard, so we want the maximum amount of room for the dogs. So we're going with a vertical paver manufactured wall. So this just gives Cruz kind of a guideline on where to build this wall. I think that's more than enough room for the dogs to run. Yep. And knowing your dog a little bit. The other reason I've moved it <laughs> off the is if I've got a retaining wall this high, yeah. this close to here, I know he's jumping over. Exactly. So we'll keep it off. That way he won't leap leap over. This whole thing, Chris, I'm thinking we just strip out the grass mm -hmm. and then just do like a crushed granite or pea gravel or something just so we don't have muddy paws. Yes. Running around. Run. Yep. Makes sense. So no grass back there. What's the point of it? We'll just have a crushed stone. Yep. So that's the wall we need him to build. Instead of trying to bring the pond right up close to this patio, maybe doing a couple stone steps down to a smaller little intimate sitting area underneath the street. Like it'll feel great to just kind of sit underneath the natural. And why, and why did you decide to do that versus what we would normally do, which is put it right at the edge of the patio, just like my pond. Well, yours, same thing. See how high your deck is? Yes. And then we created a lower patio as a sitting area. So we put your pond in the back corner of the yard. Yep. Just because we wanted to work with the grade. If we try to build the pond. That, we that we lose the height of the waterfall. We have a 12 inch high waterfall. Okay, or, so. Or we would have two feet of exposed stone. Yes. Along the patio. All right, so can you actually mark out the pond on the ground? So there's your pond. That's a good size pond. Once we get those rocks in, it's gonna shrink down quite a bit. Like we're gonna. But I'm a little confused at how you're gonna go. Are you gonna put a patio in here, like a Crystal crushed? Uh huh. Like maybe whatever material we use to go around there. So are you gonna have Cruz put a little one step in? Like oh, I love your idea of having Cruz fix these. Yeah. Around the perimeter. Yeah. And then we can come in and drop in 
a couple stone steps, I think to a patio that just comes, I don't know, I would say just kind of bring it like right up to this. And this is why we don't do drawings because it's all free flow because we're doing this right now. All of a sudden a patio gets added because we want to figure out a way not to lose the waterfall height here and have a simple way to get down and sit alongside of it but not bring it up all the way up to here which is if we did that, it would drop the waterfall height, right? Yes, correct. Good job, fine guy. <laughs> Someone had to teach you. So I, I think put the skimmer box here. All right, so it's all marked out. Like Greg said, we don't do really detailed drawings because it's such an organic process but we kind of have the idea of where the pond's gonna go. Once that retaining wall goes in, we'll have a better idea of what we can actually do with the height of our waterfall. We know the rock that we're bringing out, the same stuff that's in the sandbox. So it'd be kind of fun to disassemble that and see how close we can get it to what we built before. But in my mind, I 100% know it won't look the same because we're gonna get out here and you're gonna spin that rock just a little different or things won't fit the same. There's no way to make it look identical to what we did in the sandbox, which is kind of cool because then this one's gonna be a one-of-a-kind custom creation just like every other feature we build. It's kind of cool that there's children next door that will play with it too. So mm -hmm. it's all about the kids and it doesn't matter what size they are, kids enjoy it the same. <laughs> He's been watching that same section of the patio for about 20 minutes now. This is what you do when you get to a point in your career where you have nothing left to do you just play with garden hoses. Mm. See? <laughs> yeah. All That's right. nice. Like, we haven't even started work yet, and now we're wet. Mm. <laughs> so, next step is get crews out here. Can't wait to see that wall done. I think they're going to build that in the next couple of weeks. And then shortly after that, we have to play with our schedule and figure out how we can get through that fence and get back into here and build, build this thing. Yeah. All right, so a very exciting day because we're building a water feature for my very good next door neighbors, or my very friendly next door neighbors. We just met in October, it's June now. And of course, they've been hanging out so much at my backyard over here that they wanted a water feature right here. And this is cool because, have we done this before? Disassembled and reassembled a water feature? Not exactly, no, yeah, not like not, this. Not exactly. <laughs> so this project was originally created by Brian and Chris for the Aquascape University. We'll actually put a link down to the Aquascape University. It's a training university online, and we actually created this as a step-by-step -step process. Now we're gonna recreate it in someone's actual backyard. And of course, I'm not the pondless waterfall guy, I'm the pond guy, so they're adding a pond. And Ed, we were just talking about this. I'm gonna grab the camera from you. Yep. We're basically you know, trying to think about the size of the rocks that Daniel took down. He actually disassembled the whole water feature. Editor, of course, add Aquascape University footage that he did, and then Daniel kind of whipping it down. Yep. So, Daniel, you numbered the rocks, didn't you? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> One through 30. <laughs> so, Ed and I were talking for about 10 seconds uh, this morning about it, and we said, instead of trying to figure out where the water feature or where the waterfalls that you disassembled should start, what we should really do is just design the pond and then the build the water feature the around it. Yeah, exactly. That would make the most sense to me because we have to excavate this, generate all the soil. The only thing that we'll really have to do is kind of measure up that distance. I don't know if we have a number for how big that waterfall was because then we could kind of put a line in the sand over here and then start working backwards off of that up towards the uh, patio. Now, I guess the challenge that we have from what I'm seeing is that patio is well above yeah. this elevation, you know, so mm -hmm. it's probably up in here somewhere. So we're gonna have to kind of build things up a little bit or possibly have a little bit of a step over there, maybe find something right in between that makes the most sense. Well, we gotta oh. figure out where we're gonna set the water. Yeah, exactly. The yep. nice thing is that we've got six extra pallets of stone coming, so we could even do a couple destinations. Oh, maybe. yeah, that'll work. That'll so I think, Ed, why there. don't we just spray paint out the pond yeah. so that we can start excavating that. Well, I wanna okay. check to see where that water, how big the waterfall is though, because we have that specific waterfall already. So I wanna make sure, you but, know- like, But those rocks aren't here, right? Yeah, we They're on their way. Oh, well, when will they get here? Okay. This is what I was saying. I'm like, whatever it is, yeah. we'll figure out how to fit it in here. Yeah. We know it's approximately, what, eight feet wide or something? Uh, it's about 12. Yeah. 12 feet wide. Yeah, so we're gonna have to, yep. so pond's gonna have to be like right That's here That's what I was somewhere. thinking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And of course, oh, it doesn't have to be assembled perfectly because we might actually get it better because we got <laughs> Joe here. Joe, all the way from California. What's going on, everybody? You said, hey, if I can ever lend a hand, and I'm like, you can because we can't fit my neighbors in if I don't get some extra help. So we got Joe, we got 
Matt, a local certified Iron Steve's contractor that asked if he could come out. And we got Papa, the oldest guy on the crew. Are you 54? Yes. Okay, you're the same as Ed, 54. So we got two old guys, two, three old guys. Joe, what are you, like me, 50? 50 this year. Okay. So we've got five old guys, like see, one, two, three, four, five, and then how old are you, Daniel? <laughs> 30, almost uh, turned 38 on Saturday. Okay, so what go. I, we're going to keep you in the hole and then um, I'll operate the equipment. All right. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ed, so what you got designed here? So what I'm thinking is we got to fit the waterfall in, obviously, on the one side. Trying to kind of accentuate. They have this point coming out from the patio. So maybe doing like a rocky outcropping or something over here, kind of an extension of the patio where they can kind of come off the edge, stand on some big flat stones. Daniel said we got some more rock over at the shop we can bring out some maybe some big flat outcroppings thing and skimmer over here and that's just because we got the main part of the yard over there they got the dogs they got kids all that type of stuff leave that area open for turf keep the maintenance side over here on the one side we run our pipe right up to that waterfall kind of belly out a little bit so we have that nice wide expanse of water over by the lawn over here it's a little bit tighter so i kind of choked it down a little bit yep maybe come in here with some plantings kind of soften stuff up might want to shade off kind of the neighbors over here kind of ah. block off that stuff I don't there know. You know. You, so you know when Ed starts talking smack. <laughs> yeah, all right. Tall arms. Lock off that pond guy guy. You, you, you haven't worked here long enough to talk smack about the boss. <laughs> That's a pretty good sized pond. It is. Yeah, yeah. Right now we're about 12 foot by 10. Nice. Yeah, so I think we're pretty good. And, Again, and, we'll, and start, we'll start digging, and if we need to chop out a little bit more, we have enough liner, so thankfully mm -hmm. we got plenty of liner here, so always doing that. I mean, that's kind of something I always love to do. You add in an extra five feet. All right. That gives that little bit extra flexibility once we start setting those big boulders, we want to kind of carve some stuff And in. we, we still got enough room got here to room put the, here to do the rocks waterfall. that Daniel disassembled. Yep. All right, let's start digging, Daniel. Let's do it. What's fun for me is I obviously love ponds and the fact that, uh, of course, my neighbors started hanging out by our pond and want one. And this is how it works. One pond becomes two, two becomes four. When you get water features in the ground, people want water features. Do you think that these people were in the market, you know, Mike and Jen for a water feature before I moved here, you know, six months ago? Nope, but they start hanging out. My backyard right over here. And we spent many about hours drinking wine and relaxing and kicking back over there next to my pond. And now we're putting one for them. And this is how it works. When you put a water feature in the neighborhood, all of a sudden the guy behind it, the guy two doors down gets one. And this is how I grew my business from my hobby, building ponds for people just as a summer job to a full-time career. If you're interested in a career, we want more people like Joe, you know, that will come in from California because they want to change professions. In fact, let's go ask Joe. Hey, Joe, does build, why is building water features better than being a union sheet metal worker? <laughs> you know what? The camaraderie of the tribe is great. Mm -hmm. And it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun. We're going to transform somebody's lives together that I actually enjoy because this is what it's all about right here. And we're going to do it in two days. We're going to transform this space and how Jen and Mike live the aquascape lifestyle. Yeah. It is like 40 let's see, degrees. nine Almost in the morning right? on day one, and I say by the end of the day tomorrow we got this waterfall flowing, and then by the end of Friday we'll have plants and everything else out there. So going well. Always take care of us. We got some incredible weathered limestone, moss rock coming in for this project. Quality of materials makes all the difference in the world when we're talking about custom water features. We got this beautiful giant slab. I'm thinking that guy's gonna go right off of the existing patio. It'll be a great destination piece. 